Hi there, I hope you're all doing well and welcome to my channel. My name is Rocco and today we're going to be taking a quick look at the DAS 3D Spot Renderer, how to use it and when to use it in our scenes. Now for those of you who are new to DAS or to those who've never really had much reason to use it, the Spot Renderer is a way that we can render out only a selected part of our viewport rather than having to do the old image, the whole image, sorry, uh, and thereby saving time in the process. Now what this means is that we can get cleaner previews of those selected areas that we choose much quicker uh, and most importantly we can also make changes to fix errors in our renders or if you're a bit like me uh, and we change our mind every five minutes or so uh, what we can do is we can we can make changes we can say we don't like the particular look of that character's hair or that t-shirt maybe I should try it in blue or something like that I'm always doing that after I've done a render I'll change my mind every single time uh, but what the spot render allows me to do is to make those changes and do so quickly without having to render out the full image. Now before we actually get to that if you don't mind I'm just going to give a little shout out to a Facebook group that I have set up where if you're on Facebook yourself you can go along join the group and then post your renders and talk about DAS, pose questions and ask for advice and either I'll be around there to to answer some questions or other people who are part of the group will no doubt help you out. Uh, now it doesn't matter if you're a newbie to DAS or if you've been around the block a few times uh, personally I'd love to see what you guys do you know with your renders. Uh, so if if you are on Facebook, head over there and join the group and post what you've got. I'd love to see it. Uh, you'll probably be able to find the link at the bottom of the screen here or if not, a direct link down in the description below. And talking of which, you'll also be able to see links to the assets that we'll be using in this video down there below too. Uh, now, without wanting to sound a little bit too creepy, we've actually caught today's model while she's taking a bath. But this is actually a real render that I did in the last week or so. Uh, and in this render, I did actually use the spot renderer. Uh, so what I figured is that it would be a good idea to use this video as a real world example of the spot, of the spot renderer rather than manufacture, some, manufacture something to show you what I did. And before we get to all that spot rendering business, uh, I just want to give once more a big thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel over this last few months. By the time this video goes up, I will have just about or will have just hit a thousand subscribers, which you know, just is crazy if you ask me. Uh, so yeah, a big thank you to everybody. Also a big shout out as well to everybody who right now is going to subscribe to this video by hitting the subscribe button and the little notification bell down below so that you don't miss any future videos that I do. And I really do appreciate your support. Uh, so then, spot renderers. We have our model in the bath. We're all ready to render. And there's the final render that I did last week. Everything looks good, no errors, no mistakes, everything came out just as I wanted it to, but the more I looked at it, the more that I wasn't really that keen on the hair colour. Uh, it was dark, it was black, I wanted something really just a bit, a little bit lighter. The more I looked at it, the more I was convinced that I did. It's fine and everything, but what I decided to do therefore is Put on a new coloured hair, a lighter coloured hair, and then because I didn't want to render out the entire scene again, I then decided to use the spot renderer to do it. So what I did when I came back into DAS is I changed the air colour now. As you can see on the screen here, it's still in the original black that it was. But if I just flip back and forward with the undo buttons, you can see I've gone from that black onto that more lighter colour, which is great. Now, for those people who are on the you know, or on decent graphics cards, decent NVIDIA cards, and you use the NVIDIA preview, this part of the spot renderer now probably isn't useful anymore. It's being superseded by the NVIDIA iRay preview. Uh, but for those people on, you know, slow GPUs or those people who just couldn't get the NVIDIA uh, iRay preview to work, what we can do, we can use the spot renderer now without having to look at, to, having to render out the entire image just to see what our changes make, uh, how, how our changes have turned out. And we do that by coming up to this little tool up in our bar called the spot renderer, there's a surprise. Click here to activate the spot renderer tool, as you see there on the tooltip. Uh, and if we give that a click, it then highlights yellow. But if we also click this button next to it, which is the toolbar settings, we can see that when we do that and we're, we've got toolbar, uh, spot renderer selected in the toolbar, you see we've got two options, the viewport or the new window. Now, again, if you've got the NVIDIA iRay preview, you don't have to 
you know, you, you certainly wouldn't use this way anymore. You'd use the NVIDIA iRay. But what we can do with viewport select is that we can just take our cursor on the screen, as you can see, left click and hold, and then just drag out this little marquee box around our character's head. Now, when we let go, Daz will begin to render the image as if it was just doing a normal image. But what it will do, it will only render out that yellow bounded box and it will, in this instance, just do it in the viewport. So if I let go, I'll get back to you when uh, Daz has gone through all the process of you know, preparing the scene. So as you can now see, after Daz has done the, the preparation, the full preparation that it would do for a full render, it's now starting to render out that bounded box that I selected uh, in the scene with our character. So we can now take a look at the new coloured hair, which I like, and I'm going to go with that hair. But for those people who can't use the NVIDIA preview, uh, you would have to render out the entire scene and you would have to wait. But as you can see there, that little square is getting quite clean and quite clear quite quickly. Uh, it has a lot of quites. Uh, so yeah, they, that's how we use the uh, spot renderer in uh, as a preview tool within our uh, scene so that we don't have to render out the entire scene in itself. If I cancel that now, because I'm not going to go too much further with it, uh, it then holds it in the viewport for us so that we can take a look. And then to get rid of it, all that we need to do is just click our uh, mouse in the viewport itself and it takes off the uh, spot rendered view that we created. Now that's all good and well, uh, but as I said, for most people watching this video, that will, be, will have been superseded now by the NVIDIA uh, you know, preview tool that we've got. But I've just showed it for completeness sake and for those people that can't use the NVIDIA uh, preview tool themselves. However, where the spot renderer really comes into its own, like I said, is when you want to create uh, something different in your scene that's there if you want to fix an error if you want to change your mind about something we've changed our mind to be out by, by the hair this time the hair color going from the black now to this more blondy colored type so what we can do now is uh, instead of the tool over here on our left being set a viewport if we now set it to new rent new window and again with our making sure we've got our spot renderer tool selected uh, we now again hold down our left mouse button and draw in the scene and try to cover every single bit of the, the hair there and when we let go we will now go once more into the process of doing a full preparation render and doing a full render as you can see it's open the, win the, the render window and once it's gone through all that it will only render out that little square that we have uh, rendered now when it gets to the end of this uh, render We'll stop, I'll come back to the video and we'll take it from there, but I'm just going to have to render this out now. So I'll see you in a moment. And there we have our finished render. And as you can see, it's only rendered out the square that we selected uh, when we set the spot renderer off. And everything else around the image is just transparent. Nothing there, it's just transparent. Nothing's been rendered. Now that becomes important when we come down to save this image because uh, we need to save it out as a PNG down here. If we save it out as a JPEG or something like that, that transparent bit that we see will be saved out as as a white background or a black background whichever it may be but when we save it out as a png it saves that transparency data information that we've got uh which is important when we come to merge our previous render the full render that we did with this addition that we've made so when we've made sure it's on png and we've put the name in we just hit save as we normally do and now what I've done is I've just popped into Photoshop where we're going to merge the original render that, that we did with the little small addition that we've just done together into one image. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, then don't worry. Any any paint package that can use multiple layers uh, will will do exactly the same job. And there's not crazy Photoshop skills being being put on show here at all. Uh, so something like GIMP, which is an open source paint package, uh, is you can do it fine in that if you don't have Photoshop. I'll put a link down to GIMP down below also as well if you if you need to get your hands on that. Uh, so what we have at the moment then, in we can see here we've got the original render that we did with our model in the bath with a black hair, the original black hair that we've got. But then what we've also got open is our new file 
where we did our new hair, where, as you can see, we've got the transparency that we saved as the PNG and just that area that we rendered out. So what we want to do is we want to go back to our original render uh, and with that particular layer selected, in that case background, you want to come up to select all so that we select the entirety of the image. I'm then going to come up to edit and copy and then I'm going to come back onto where the new hair is and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the layer that we've just, or the, the, the image that we've just copied into this image. And what it does, it, it layers that over the top of our previous layer, which we can see over here. And all we then need to do is on our layer one, which is our, you know, the, 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 the additions that we've made, the changes that we've made, just move it so that that layer now sits on top of our original image. And if I turn the, the layer off with the, the new color and just keep turning it back on, you can see now that we've joined the two images together, we've made the changes that we wanted to make, and all I need to do now is just save that out as a new image, uh, and that will be the end of that. And so that is the spot renderer. Uh, we've gone out, we've made a change to an image that we'd al already rendered previously. Uh, we've only rendered out the changes that we made, and we've done so much quicker than having to render out the full image in its entirety. Uh, now, the full original image took about 50, 52 minutes or so to render out, while this small amendment that we've done took eight minutes, I think it was. Uh, so that's quite a saving, you know, against... You know, certainly when you compare it against, you know, having to render out the entire image. So yeah, there we go. That's the spot renderer. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. If so, then please share the video about as, as well as give me a little like down below as that tells YouTube that I'm a better YouTuber than what I actually am. Uh, and it also gives the video a bit of a boost there in the rankings if you do so. Also, if you haven't already, would you please consider subscribing and hitting the little notification bell down below as that helps the channel keep growing and keeps telling me that people want to see more videos about Daz 3D. And finally, if you have any comments or questions, whether it's about the spot renderer or Daz 3D in general, or if you just want a little chat, then pop down below in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Uh, so that for now, thanks for watching, keep rendering, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye now.